geeks, nerds, gamers, and trolls. This is your MMOBomb.com. First look at Space Lords, a newly free-to-play third-person PvE slash PvP co-op shooter. We'll get into that. It's got a couple of things going on here. It also likes you to punch things in the face a lot for a shooter. Anyway, I am the new Fridge Troy Blackbird. We're going to jump in and see what this game looks like, sounds like, and plays like. Help you decide if it's a game that you would like to try. As always, for the latest free-to-play online gaming news and information, be sure to head over to MMOBomb.com and subscribe here on the YouTube channel if you haven't already for more first looks coming out every week. So, Space Lords, this is going to look familiar to some of you guys. Uh, this launched in September of 2017, I believe, as a pay-to-play game called Raiders of the Broken Planet. As of August 23rd of 2018, it is now free-to-play and has a new name called Space Lords. Along with this update has come a few improvements to the game based on player feedback that they've been taking since last September. So they've thrown in some changes, so it's not going to be the exact same game if you played back when it was Raiders of the Broken Planet. But, you know, it's still going to be pretty similar. They didn't overhaul the complete game. Now, right off the bat, I'm playing a big minigun toting badass named Constantine. At least that's what it looks like it's pronounced like. I hope it is. He's like Russian. So I'm going to go with Constantine. He's a badass. I like him. Uh, my kind of playstyle, just big heavy. As you're going to see, we have to punch things in the face a lot. Like I said, this is a shooter, but you're encouraged to punch things in the face. If you want more ammo, you're going to have to punch things in the face. And by punching things in the face, you're going to have to use a rock, paper, scissors system where there's a punch and a grapple and a dodge. And each one goes around in a circle. And I'm going to get this wrong, but like punch beats grapple and grapple beats dodge. And that may be completely backwards, but you get the point. Each one beats another one and it's a rock, paper, scissors circle. So if you're doing like a grapple or a punch, if the other person is doing the counter to that, you're going to fail and the other person is going to win. And there's a lot of punching in the face for a game that is a shooter. Uh, because you have to get ammo like that. You're going to run around without bullets at all if you don't punch things in the face and get reloads and collect the, the aether or whatever the, the resource is that you have to collect. But you have to punch the things in order to get that. So you're going to be doing a lot of shooting, but you're also going to be participating in this rock, paper, scissors melee quite a bit. Space Lords features four-player co-op objective-based gameplay. We're going to get into that in just a second because what you're about to see on the video is... Man, it's 2018, and I get why companies do this, but this is peer-to-peer -peer servers. Oh, man, I've, I've, I've moaned and complained about peer-to-peer. -peer. I get why smaller companies especially have to do that. Uh, saves a lot of cash, but this is what you get. Uh, the person who was hosting the game either disconnected or crashed, or their internet went out, or their computer died, or their cat ran across the keyboard, or their mother called them for dinner, or who knows what. But at the end of the day, they were the host of the game. So as soon as they went away, boom, we're in this loading screen just waiting. And at this point, I didn't know if the game was going to come back or what. Finally, it does come back. So there's just three of us. And God, this camera. We'll get into that here in a minute, too. But, but three of us came back in finally. Uh, it picked a new host. And we get to start completely over with the objective of moving this guy who stuck up on the crane out to the platform to get him down. So, yeah, peer-to-peer -peer in 2018. Mm, yay. So, getting back to the gameplay. As you can see, it's uh, cover-based. All you do is lean up against the cover, and the uh, systems automatically put you into cover. There's no button to push to go in and out. It's actually quite smooth. When I first started uh, using it, it was, it was a little weird to get used to. I would jump in and out when I wasn't really expecting to. But after you you know play for a few minutes, you, you get used to the cover system and it just automatically falls in and out. It automatically peeks around corners and stuff like that. So it's actually a pretty smooth system that once you just spend a couple of minutes getting used to it, it's actually, it actually works pretty great. So cover system gets a thumbs up. Also a thumbs up are the characters in the game. They're all pretty darn unique. They're all interesting to look at. They all have great voice acting. They all have interesting personalities. They really set themselves apart from each other and just going out in the menu screen and just looking at the different characters, they all look interesting in different ways. And so far out of the, the you start with four unlocked and then I've unlocked a fifth since I started playing, they all play fairly unique so far. Now there's up to like 17 I think it is right now. So I mean there's bound to be some overlap at some point, but so far each one has been a unique experience playing it and their characters are very different and the voice acting has been phenomenal. The English voice acting has been great. Also, it's fun to play a shooter that, you know, even though it's it's mostly co-op against AI, it's it's not just team deathmatch. 
over and over and over. It's actually objective based to an extent. I mean, you're still killing a lot of dudes in order to accomplish the objective, but it's not just team deathmatch games. Just everybody does team deathmatch PvP to death. This is a nice objective based co op shooter. That's quite a bit of fun so far in the missions that I've played. Now at the beginning of the game, what I did say is there is some PvP in this game as well. And that comes in the form of an antagonist. And you're not going to get one every game. You're going to get one if there's somebody queuing up as an antagonist. And for that, it's asymmetrical PvP. Think Evolve. It's going to be four versus one antagonist. And they're going to come in and try to mess with you and try to interfere with you completing your objective. So... Unlike Evolve, the game doesn't revolve around having to have that fifth player to jump in and screw with you. So missions will progress just PvE if there's no one available to play the antagonist. Uh, but just occasionally you will have someone jump in and PvP with you. And I don't think I've actually ran into that so far. I'm a few, I mean, I'm probably a dozen or 16 games or so in so far. I believe the recordings were made about half a dozen games in or so. But yeah, I've played quite a bit of it, and I don't think I've ran into an antagonist yet. At least it hasn't been super obvious if I have. And that's sort of one of the problems with the game, I, I will say, as a thumbs down, is the objectives and whether or not there's an antagonist and some of the stuff going on. Like, it gives you the information, but it's so vague. Like, it's really hard to tell exactly what's going on and what you're supposed to be doing sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's, like, super obvious. It's like, go here, do this thing. And then other times it's like, well, you need to overload this reactor well you walk up to it and you can't do anything with it it says zero of one but i don't know how to interact with it so it's uh you know some of it's going to be playing the, the missions over and over and just learning them as you go but as a new player jumping in some of these missions i was just like i was just shooting stuff because i was like man I, I honestly have no idea what's going on around me so just know that going in you're gonna need to play the missions a few times to to really get a feel for what's going on in them now my second biggest problem with the game is something that's really subjective and this is going to come in number two behind the freaking peer-to-peer -peer servers but the camera shake oh my god we're watching a cutscene right now even the even the cutscenes have to camera shake there's just they 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 cut back and forth between different perspectives constantly in the cutscenes and this camera shake and when you're playing the game the whole world is like moving and the camera shakes so much it's just it's so hard sometimes, especially in the melee. The camera can really be all over the place in the melee combat and just really throw you for a loop as far as what's going on around you and, and you really lose perspective of what's happening because the camera just freaking jerks around like crazy. And it's not as bad in the cover system. That's where I thought I was going to have my problem is a lot of times in these bad cover systems, the camera jerks around too much and comes in at weird angles. The cover system's actually really fantastic. It's just the overall camera shake and there's no settings in the menu to turn that crap off. Oh my God, get rid of the camera shake, please. But it's like I said, it's even in the cutscene. So obviously it was artistic style choice to show the chaos of the world around you. Some of us just want to be able to see what the hell's going on. Like look at the way the camera tilts and stuff as the gameplay is happening. That's just so, especially for somebody who's prone to motion sickness, this game hasn't really made me sick, but I just prefer my games to be stable. This makes freaking Gears of War look like it was shot on a steady cam for crying out loud. Now going back to the uniqueness of each character, each character does have a loadout so you can go in and customize them. And there's a card system in place. You have to unlock different slots as you go, as you progress, and then you'll be able to get different cards you can put in those different slots and I think this guy I've got one that's attack damage and one as long as I'm full health I take less damage things like that so different loadouts you can you know each one has its own game style and play style and you can go in and customize that even further and make it more to your liking which is pretty nice also the game features a weapon upgrade system uh, you get different blueprints in the game and you have to use gold in-game currency and upgrade the different weapons and it lets you allocate the points to different stats within the weapon like just straight damage critical chance critical damage and the rewards you get from different missions now i have done some reading so far where the blueprints a lot of people are complaining that they're a heck of a grind to get because it's an rng chance uh, to even get a blueprint then after you get it you have to do specific things in order to unlock the blueprint and you have to be on the character that you want to play to get the blueprint on so it's a you know some of the reviews are not crazy about the blueprint system 
as a new player, I've been getting a couple of blueprints just from completing the missions, the campaign missions, as I go along. So, so far, I haven't played deep enough to get into that yet to really be able to speak on that from personal experience. Just know that's a possibility um, of grindy blueprints for weapon upgrades. Um, hasn't been too bad, like I said. For a new player, you're going to get a couple of blueprints. Uh, now, they were for characters that they decided I should have blueprints for. Not characters that I necessarily want to play. I haven't gotten one for this guy yet. I've gotten one for the one character out of the five that I haven't even played yet. So, you know, blueprints, weapon upgrades, that's going to be a thing. And character unlocks are tied to the progression system. You have to level up at certain levels. You'll have the ability to spend gold, the in-game currency, to unlock certain heroes. So you can't just save up gold and then get whichever hero is next. You've got your eye on that you want to try next. You have to be a certain level to unlock certain heroes. All the newer ones are higher level to unlock. The first guy unlocked at like level 6. The next one unlocks at like level 8. And then there's like one at level 13 and so on like that. And then there's some of the newer ones don't unlock to your like level, your account's level like 52 or something. And then you have to use the in-game gold too. And each set of heroes are part of a different faction. There's like four different factions for the Raiders. So, like, Constantine is a member of the fourth faction, and I don't know the name of it. You'll have to forgive me for that. So, if I want anybody else in that faction, I have to have faction points from that faction. So, I have to play other characters in that faction to accrue those faction points at the end of the game and progress that way. So, you got to level up, and if you've got somebody you want your eye on, you got to get the right level, and you've got to have enough faction points within that faction, which means you could also be stuck maybe playing some characters you don't necessarily want to play in order to get to the ones that you do. So just know that going forward, you're not going to be able to save up currency and unlock the guy you want. Uh, there's a system in place that's a little restrictive as far as that's concerned, which is something I'm not a fan of personally, uh, but maybe some of you don't care as much. And best I can tell, there's no direct purchases of these characters. There's the progression system you can unlock with in-game currency, and there's two available on the Steam store for direct purchase. They come with a character unlock and like a rare blueprint for their weapon. They are freaking, let me look right now, they are $34.99 a piece. $34 and $35 US dollars to unlock a character and a blueprint. It says that the blueprints are approximately 30 hours of gameplay, depending on your playing style. Blah, blah, blah. Um, based on some of the reading I've done, maybe more than 30 hours to get a blueprint. But, yeah, 35 bucks. And there's only two of them available. Uh, the two newest ones, Valeria and some other dude. Yeah, $35 a piece. So, you know, if you really like this game, uh, just, just don't spend that much. That's $35 for a character. I'm like, holy Jesus. There are skins in the game. I don't have any now. Um, there's a cash currency that you can purchase, and you can unlock skins and some other items. You can also convert that cash currency into the in-game gold. So you can spend money to help. If you have a gold shortage as far as unlocking cards or characters and stuff like that, you can convert uh, your cash currency into the gold, but no direct purchases of characters that I've been able to see. So. But yeah, objective-based gameplay... Customization, lots of customization. You can customize your weapons, like I said, with the stats that you want. You can customize your character with loadouts to play in the style that you want. There's, there's a lot of good things going here. It's a, it's an almost game, man. They're so close. Uh, things like the peer-to-peer, -peer, the, the weird camera shake. Uh, some of the complaints I've read about grind and stuff like that could be off-putting. The progression system, the way that certain characters are locked behind certain factions, you can't just choose the character you want next. Some of those are thumbs down, man, but there's a lot going on here that's actually kind of exciting. At the end of the day, I don't know with the camera shake and the peer-to-peer -peer and the, the not be able to unlock like a guy that I want. Like if I see one that I'm interested in, I can't just save up the currency and unlock him. I've really got to grind it out to get to certain ones. I don't know that in the long term this is something I'm going to keep on my computer for now. But I can't say that I didn't have fun while I was playing to, to get the first look footage. I definitely did enjoy my time. There was a lot of fun stuff going on. And, you know, I don't have a ton of bad things to say about the gameplay itself. Um, now, here's, I think this is the part where you see the big, yes, this dude absolutely wrecks my face. These big elite dudes, man, you got to be careful with those. You can't just melee them when they're at full health. They will wreck you. And I think this is the section of footage where I have to learn that lesson the hard way because I get wrecked several times in a row by those guys. 
So we're going to jump ahead a little bit because uh, this video is actually quite long, especially with the, the disconnect there. It added several minutes uh, onto the gameplay. So we're just going to jump to the end screen and let you see getting the rewards and stuff. And the uh, story mode, man, there's like, there is good story in the game. They've done a great job with cutscenes. And like I said, the voice acting has been good. The characters are unique, have a lot of personality. So at the beginning and ending of each game, there's cutscenes to watch. Lots and lots of cutscenes to watch. Luckily, you can skip those as a group as long as everybody agrees to skip them. And back when this game was Raiders of the Broken Planet, you split rewards at the end of the game. Now everybody gets their own rewards based on their performance in the game. So 6.5 out of 10. That wasn't my greatest. I got wrecked by some of those elite dudes quite hard for a while, which probably didn't help my score any. But yeah, I got some in-game gold, got some faction currency. To I mean, what's the point of playing the game if you're not going to get some sweet, sweet loots at the end, right? Anyway, that dude's going to walk off screen and we're going to jump out and take a look at what's next. So let's jump out to the menus real quick. That way you can see what that looks like. Get your rewards at the end of the game. Good old loot boxes. I haven't seen any way to purchase like these loot boxes. And I don't know if these are just random or if it's set rewards from the end of every game or not. But it... It's presented like a loot box, whether it is or not. So, um, yeah, in, in this video, we just hit level four. Looks like I'm level psh, I'm level eight now. I think I can unlock the the next guy, the next hero that I can unlock. So, we're gonna go in and check out some of the like. This is the hideout. This is where you can see all your characters, unlock characters, and there's the loadout. There's the card you can put in, and I think yeah, put in a card here, and. Got to spend faction points to do that as well. So you're going to be spending lots of your currency on different things. So save up that currency, both the faction points and the gold. You're going to be using quite a bit as you go along to unlock new characters and customize the ones that you have. As you can see, I've got a damage and a reduction of damage. And then he's, he's got a deck of cards that you can look at that you've unlocked so far. Go up and take a look at that. Here's the ones that I have unlocked so far. As you level up, you're going to get access to more cards that you can use. Now, I did misspeak a little bit earlier when I said you had to use specific faction points to unlock characters within the faction. That's not actually the case. You use the in-game gold to unlock those characters. You do accrue faction-specific points by playing characters from those factions, but those are used to build out your loadout is what you use the faction points for. So just playing the game and getting the general gold currency, you do still have to hit the proper account level to get access to unlock specific characters, but you use the in-game gold for that. So I apologize for misspeaking earlier. But yeah, the faction points are used for your loadouts. The gold is used for unlocking, but you still have to have the proper account level to even have access to them. That being said, I'm still not, I'm still not a big fan of the progression system and that like I said, I can't just save up my gold and like the next guy that I find interesting when I get enough gold, just unlock him to be able to have to grind the level out too. And like I said, some of the newer characters are higher level. So I'm just personally not a fan of that still. Um, but yeah, it's it's a progression system. So, so there it is. You're going to have to grind it out. You need a reason to play the game, I guess, and to get that next character that might actually enjoy the game and make you want to play more. Well, in order to get him, you're going to have to uh, hopefully enjoy the game and play more. So there you go. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for this first look for Space Lords, formerly known as Raiders of the Broken Planet. If you want to give it a try, you can uh, check it out and download it for free on Steam. Keep in mind, this has been a first look, not a full review, not a pro guide. This is to help you decide if it's a game that you might be interested in. Check it out. It's on Steam for free. We do like us some free-to-play games here at MMOBomb.com, which is the website you should check out for all your free-to-play online gaming news and information as we look at the Steam page and these $35 character packs. What the hell is going on with those? I've been the Noob Fridge, Troy Blackburn. You can follow me on YouTube.com slash Noob Fridge. Thank you so much for checking this first look out. Look forward to talking to you next time. For now, this first look for Space Lords is done. I am out. And not spending $35 for a character unlock. That's for sure.